celebrate. <laughs> and if you look at it that way, um, uh, it, it brightens each day as you, as you go along. So last week we did a, a little song and we talked about um, the incarnation and how God uh, came and um, into the Virgin Mary and he fully God became fully man. Emmanuel, God with us. And uh, about the miracles that really surrounded Christmas and the, the angels that came from heaven and made announcements to people. And just miracles. Um, and one of those I mentioned was a star and, uh, that God created, this special star, to lead uh, the Magi from the east uh, to see uh, the Christ, the Christ child. And they were um, smart enough, uh, they were wise men, they were called wise men, but um, they, they studied the stars and they knew that something uh, was new, that something was different. And I think Holy Spirit told them uh, to follow, <laughs> to follow the star. But um, one thing about that is that God's timing is perfect. It's absolutely perfect. That star came into creation. It came into, he created it. It came into existence at the perfect time. And he, his planning is perfect. Like he had to make all of these plans before the foundation of the world. He knew that Jesus was going to come and be a man. Uh, so his, his, his timing is absolutely perfect. And he had to plan that you know, star to start shining right at the right time and place it in the 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 Magi's hearts to, to be studying, you know, over this time. So he's, he, was, he is always at work. And um, uh, we can trust his timing and his plan. And those, those men must have had really great assurance of faith to follow a star. Like, I don't know how many miles they went, but it was a long way from what I understand. <laughs> But their faith had, but they uh, they knew it was something special, and they got to behold uh, the Christ, the Savior of the world, when he was yet a baby. And I wanted to read that in Matthew, in Matthew, starting in uh, chapter two, uh, verse one. Matthew chapter two, verse one. It says, "Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold." There came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea. For thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child, and when you have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. But he was, he was lying right there, but anyway. <laughs> when they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And uh, uh, one thing, uh, so this song is about the star, but also um, it talks about the star and how it shined and it caught their attention. And it reminds me that, that we actually are... Uh, when we know Jesus, we are we are to be lights in the world and to shine. And um, the one verse that I, that comes to my mind is Isaiah chapter sixty, verse one. It says, "Arise, 
shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the, glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. So um, we, Jesus is our light, he's come, and he has shined his light upon us, and we should be a light to the world. So maybe think of yourself as the star as we play. This one's called... Um, I'm gonna shine. <laughs> I didn't write it down, but I'm gonna shine. <laughs> I'm gonna shine, yeah. <laughs> Oh, 
today and celebrate. To celebrate the greatest story of the book. I invite you today, we're going to hear another part of the story. I invite you today to listen to the story. Because in it you will find peace. In it you will find the prince of peace. In it you will find the king. My message today is called The Long Lost King. I want to tell you about a story. If you would, before I tell the story, let's give honor to the word. Let's stand and turn to Isaiah chapter 9, starting in verse 6. And find it, say, amen. amen. Um, Amen. Nine. Isaiah chapter 9, starting in verse 6. Prophet declares by the word of the Lord, he said, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice. From that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Let's pray. Father, this morning again we praise you and we honor you. God, we acknowledge you as being our great God. We acknowledge you as being the one who has always been and will always be. Father, this morning, help us to hear the story as we've never heard it before. Help us to hear and see, understand the power of your word and your promise. God, we acknowledge you and we bless you. Help us to see and understand by your spirit today. And it's in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. You may be seated. I'm not waiting for you, Ben. You're not going to live that down for a while. I know, I know. It'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so wonderful. This story that we so often hear quoted this time at Christmas in Isaiah chapter 9. And unto us a child is born and unto us a son is given. And we quote it so many times but sometimes I think we don't really understand the promise that was made to this. And I'm going to talk a little bit today about the king and his kingdom. Because I want you to see something. Uh, in verse 6 he says, Unto us a child is born and unto us a son of, is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder. Now, I want you to see something this morning. How many of you believe that there is such a thing as the kingdom of God? Do you believe that? Yeah. Do you believe that in order to have a kingdom, you have to have a king? Yeah. The prophet Isaiah spoke of a time that was and yet was to come. Where a king would be born that would rule over this government. He said this government will be upon his shoulders. That word government really means a kingdom or a rule or a dominion. Okay? The prophet Isaiah speaks of someone who is to come, who would head up this kingdom, who would literally bear the weight of the entire kingdom. Apart from Jesus, you have and are, I have and am, nothing. My whole ability rests and relies upon the fact that God is in charge. Amen. I am thankful today 
that the sun is still shining. Even though we're going to get snow. <laughs> the sun is still shining. Why? Because the one who is in charge created something that still exists and is still viable even to our day. Believe that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Say thank you Jesus, it's still around. You know? But the prophet spoke of, of, of someone who was to come and he was speaking what I call the prophetic perfect because he said, unto us a child is born. Now, if you've been in school, you know it is his present tense. But the prophet Isaiah was speaking of this as though it had already existed. Think about that. He said, unto us a son is given and the government will be upon his shoulders. Now, the kingdom of God and the promise that he makes in here, and I'm, I'm going to get into this here in a little bit because this is not the only instance of a promise of a king. In fact, I did this. If you read down further in verse 7, he says, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. How many likes increase? I do. In other words, when you're at the table this Christmas, give me more. <laughs> People like increase. But he says that we understand increase means more. He states here, according to the word of the Lord, the prophet states that in the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. As long as time exists, get this, God's kingdom will continue to grow. Now, it looks like the world's going to hell in a handbasket. Am I right? It looks like people are just dropping left and right. It looks like people are just, they don't care about God anymore. But according to the word of the Lord, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He doesn't say it will just exist. He says it will increase. Is that ringing true to anybody? Increase means more. So the government, his government, his kingdom will increase. His government and peace. You see, some people say, you know, according to modern day, that peace is brought through superior firepower. Right? That's how we maintain rule over the world, so to speak, because we can wipe anybody out if we want. Yeah. Isn't that the, the, the idea of building more bombs and more planes and more and more and more and more so that people can achieve peace? But it doesn't work that way, for and I'm not saying we shouldn't do it. I'm saying that's not real peace. Because the promised one, the child, the son, is promised out of his government and peace will only increase and will not end. Can I tell you today that whether, whether we see it or whether it seems logical or not, the kingdom of God is increasing. That tells me people are still getting saved. Ha! Yeah. Ha, devil! You see, Jesus said that he would build his church and the gates of hell would not, will not ever, ever, ever prevail against it. Amen. When, when I re was reading this, I was so excited because as the Lord began to show me that God's kingdom is still increasing no matter what it looks like and no matter what people say. I know it seems like we were talking in Sunday school this morning. One, one person, statistician, said that 79% of people believe in, of Americans believe in the virgin birth. That's really odd for me when only 61% only claim to be Christians. It seems like people don't believe what they say they believe. It seems like people really don't know what they say they know. 
This season, we have people all of oh, glory in the highest. And they have no idea. They never, they, they cannot glorify God in the highest because they've never bowed their knee. But no matter what it seems like, no matter what the news, or no matter what people, no matter what our neighbors say, I promise you, because the word of God cannot fail, that of his government and peace, there will be no end. The increase of it. My God is in charge. Yes. The king is in charge. Now let me just let me just tell you some things here this morning. And I'm going to go back into some scriptures. The first idea spoken in the word of God of a future kingdom is found in the promise to Abraham. In Genesis, you can write this down if you want or go there, I don't care, but I'm not stopping. <laughs> in Genesis 17, 6, the word says, and I will make thee exceedingly fruitful, God speaking to Abraham, and I will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee. Now think about that. This was one of the first recorded times when God talked about a kingdom, and he talked about it coming from the lineage of Abraham himself. He said, out of you will come kings. Now, in Genesis 49.10, we'll see how God narrows that down. He says, it, he limits that the king that was to come, the one king that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, that it would come, the king would come through the tribe of Judah. Jacob, in his summary of the future Israel, prophesied concerning Judah, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and until unto him shall the obedience of the people be. We see it further narrowed, not just peoples, but down to the line of Judah, a king was going to come. You see, there are over 400 prophecies that tell of the coming Christ. And all of them came true. Not just one, or two, or a handful. I heard a man state years ago that the, the, the odds, if you're a betting person, the odds of this happening are like taking the entire state of Texas, covering it with a foot full, foot high deep of silver dollars, painting one of them red, throwing it in the mix, blindfolding somebody, and having them go out and find that red silver dollar. It's not happening, people. Nowadays, they probably steal it before it, the person can ever get to it. But anyway, but that's the odds of this, all these prophecies of the coming king being fulfilled, and yet they were in Jesus. Yeah. He, see, God narrowed it down, and he didn't just say, the king is coming. He didn't just say he's going to come from, and I'm just using this as an example, he's going to come from the United States of America. He didn't even, he, it wasn't even so remote that he said the king is coming from the United States of America and from the state of America. Now we're a small state. But do you, do you see how specific God is getting? But God said not only is he coming to America, to Maryland, but he's coming to a town called Jennings. And in specific, he's coming to 751 Jennings Road. And he's coming to a building. And he's going to be born in this building here. Do you see how specific God gets? He's not just saying he's coming. He's telling you the exact date, place, the, the whole ordeal of it, all through history, he told that the king was coming. 
Our memory scripture this morning, out of John chapter 12, says that their, their king is coming and he's going to be riding on a donkey's coat. Come on, folks. This is bigger than you and I. This is a God. How we say how great is our God? Do we actually believe it? That our God can tell you the exact date, time, and place of when the king would be born and what he would do. For so many years, the prophet told this. The scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees, I'm sure, could quote this by heart. The Messiah is coming, and he's going to set up a rule. In fact, they thought that Jesus was going to set up an earthly kingdom while he was walking on the earth. What's the son? He never said that. I'm told of a king who was to come, but yet who always was. From Genesis, after the fall of Adam and Eve, God promised Eve that from her would come this king, and he would destroy Satan. Way back then, that's the first occurrence we hear of the coming Messiah, that he was going to come and destroy Satan. After the fall. You ever feel like sometimes you've fallen? I'm sharing this a couple weeks ago. It really just resounded in me. Sometimes after our weakest moment, after our time when we feel like we just really mess things up with God, you ever have that happen? When you've really messed things up with God, that God comes in and says, it's okay, I've got a plan. And you're part of it. I want you to see that. That even when you're at your lowest, even when you think, I've blown it, I've, I've done the worst thing possible, or I've, you know, I've messed things up, people don't want me, surely God doesn't want me. In the midst of that, God says, it's okay. I love you, I have a plan, and I'm going to use you in it. Go to the book of Luke. I'm going to read some of the Christmas story. Hello. Luke chapter 1. Listen to this starting in verse 31. Luke chapter 1 starting in 31. The promise of the angel to Mary. This is what the angel said. Now, I have to believe that this angel was speaking on behalf of God himself. So what he's saying is truth. This is not some angelic being that just speaks to your stupidity. That's, a, that's called a demon. Luke chapter 1, verse 31 says, And behold, speaking to Mary, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. Look at this. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest. Now look at this. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Look at that. This king, now, there was approximately three to four hundred years between the Old Testament and the New Testament where God was pretty much silent. He didn't speak aloud, so to speak. I believe he still spoke to people's hearts. But he didn't speak in the way that we have written form of it. It's a gap of time. We sang a song last week, it's probably one of my favorite Christmas songs, and it's O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. In that song, I see the longing for a people, for their king. It's no mistake, and we see it very, very, very randomly in today. The, the Israelite people, the Jews, have been persecuted from a long time ago, even to this very day. I, I'm shocked, utterly shocked, at how many protests are going on. 
across campuses. People who should know better. Supposed to be educated. <laughs> How people are standing up for an atrocity on October 7th, where, where thousands of Jews were killed in a barbaric assault, and they stand up and say, it's justified. It boggles my mind, because as long as there is breath in my lungs, as long as there is a brain in my skull that functions, <laughs> I will, and I'm not saying I believe everything they do is correct, but I will support the nation of Israel. Amen. I don't, and I'm not saying everything is perfect. I'm not saying everything is just done is right. I'm not saying that. But I am saying God has his hand on the nation of Israel. And anyone who opposes will be cursed. How do I know that? Because God said, I will bless those who bless you. In other words, Israel. So it has to be, makes reasonable sense. Tap on your head. It's just reasonable sense in your brain, in your skull. That if he blesses those that blesses Israel, he's going to curse those that curse Israel. True. <clears throat> it's a no-brainer to me. I want the blessing of God. How about you? I, I don't understand this, but I do understand it because Satan is out and he has been out for generations to stop the king from coming. He fought through the generations if he could annihilate the people, the, the Jews... If he could get rid of them, he could eliminate the coming king. That was his whole plan. That's been his whole plan for generations. But every time the enemy has stepped up to try to destroy the Jewish people, God has stepped in and said, not today, sir. Not tomorrow either. You know, it's like when your friend tells you, today isn't my day to be nice to you. Tomorrow doesn't look good either. <laughs> God has promised, not today, not tomorrow, not ever, are you going to destroy the people, his people. It's not going to happen. So Satan's plan has been, if I can get rid of the Jewish people, I can get rid of the Messiah. Lo and behold, they're doing it today because of their hatred, but they don't realize the fact that the king already came. Ha, 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 Fooled you, Satan. They're so blinded by their hate that they don't realize the king already came and he's coming back again. Yes, he did. You see, of his kingdom, there will be no end. So this, this king that was foretold from Genesis all the way up to the end of the, the Old Testament, we never got to actually see him. He existed, but yet he didn't come in the flesh yet. And so the people of, of Israel, the Jewish people, where is our Messiah? Where is our Yeshua who is to come? He's already came. He's already been here. He's already set up his kingdom, earthly kingdom. How do I know that? Because I know, according to Scripture, the kingdom of God is within you. <clears throat> I used to sing a song as a kid maybe some of you remember that joy is the flag flown high from the castle of my heart because the king is in residence there oh you don't know this song I do <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah, well yeah I, I learned in Bible school Sunday school you drilled in me that joy is the flag flown <clears throat> high in the castle of my heart because the king is in residence there. You see, friends, the king has established himself in you. I love it. We were talking this morning in Sunday school from, from John chapter 1 in a message Bible, even in Revelation chapter 21. Look, look, God has moved into the neighborhood. <laughs> you see, because he said he was going to establish his kingdom within us. This king who was told about, but we never saw it happen. Some still think it hasn't happened. Has revealed himself. The long lost king is Jesus. Amen. 
why we quoted John this morning from our memory scripture, that our king is coming. Our king is here. He's riding on a donkey, or a donkey's coat. In other words, see, we don't get that thinking, but they should, the, the, the Jews of that time should have understood, and some did, some did, and most did, that the king was now here. King, this is your king. We find out that not long after that, that when Jesus was on trial, they denied him as their king. But yet, above his above his head on the top of the cross was pronounced. Jesus, King of the Jews. See, even the inscriber, as he was writing that to put it above that cross, had to understand this was the Messiah. Now friends, I believe that God has a kingdom. And God, God is a king. He is our king. And he has a kingdom. And that's us. I've been... As, as, as it tortures, as much as it tortures me. Um, I love the book of Ezekiel, and we've been studying the Bible study on Wednesday night. It has, it has burnt my, fried my brain, and it has caused smoke to come out of my ears. It has, but I'm telling you, friends, there is some truth in Ezekiel that the world needs to hear. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Read Read towards the end. Some of you, you know, some, some people are oh, just too confusing. Read the last eight chapters or ten chapters, and you're going to find something. That one day there is going to come a great army against the nation of Israel. Do you see this? A great army is going to come, and it's going to encompass a lot of nations, and they're going to come against Israel. But the king. King Jesus himself is going to step in. And he himself, not armies, he doesn't need any help from anywhere else, he's going to come in and he is going to dispose of the enemy so much that it takes years to find their bones and bury. God said he would take care of his nation. And get this, read later on and you're going to find out that God said he is going to establish his government. Hello. Literally building a temple here on earth that he can live in. Well, hello. <laughs> that long lost king has shown up. And he has said, I am the king of kings. And I am the Lord of lords. Amen. You see, this long lost king isn't lost anymore. He's not lost in people's minds. He shows up very clearly every year in the month of December. He shows up very clearly in the month of December. And even non-Christians, people that don't, they proclaim His truth. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon His shoulders. And His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And of the increase of His government and peace, there shall be no end. He will, his, the promise that was made of this King Jesus that he would even sit on the throne of his father, David. Get specific? Look at Matthew's begats. The lineage of Jesus from the, from the line of David. Hallowed, folks. Look at the scripture. He said that he would give this throne this throne that was occupied by his father David was not completed under, under David's son Solomon, by the way. God let Solomon build the temple, but he wasn't the true king who would sit on David's throne. It was to be Jesus. Friend, I'm excited that this king is no longer long lost. This king is no longer in obscurity. This king is no longer quiet. But as according to what we read last week in the book of Hebrews, 
that God has now, he was spoken of by the prophets, but God has now revealed himself by his son Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I'm telling you, friends, this story of a long lost king who came to reclaim his throne. He still sits on the throne. According to the word, he sits at the right hand of God the Father in intercession for us. He still sits on his throne, and he will forever sit on the throne. Mm -hmm. Philippians says that there will come a time when every knee bows, every tongue confesses that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Oh, friends, if you thought the, king had, the kingdom had dwindled, I got news for you because of his government the increase of his government and his peace, there will be no end. As long as time exists, as long as we look at that clock, or we, you know, as long as time exists, his, his government, his kingdom, his peace will increase. My prayer is for you this Christmas is that you recognize that the king has come and that your peace increases. Because it's promised through Jesus Christ, your peace would increase. A lot of things, friends, that can take us off our path, that can try to steal our peace, that can try to, you know, I, I am a joyous person, but I'm not always happy. Happiness goes for me from day to day as it does to you, based on your external happiness. Yes. But I'm telling you, this joy comes from the King. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is my joy. So I'm not looking for, I don't wish you a happy Christmas. I wish you the King of Kings who brings peace. The Prince of Peace. I wish that your peace would increase. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, again this morning, I thank you. Thank you for the king who is in residence, the king who stands even today, the king whose government is on his shoulders, the king whose government, it, the increase of his government and peace knows no end. I thank you for that in my life. And Father, I just pray that if there's someone here today that maybe they don't have that peace in their life, maybe they don't understand that even, even while the world's in turmoil, we can have peace because of the Prince of Peace. If, if that's you, I don't want anybody looking around, please, everybody, but if that's you this morning, if it seems like the devil has robbed your peace and you need an increase in peace in your life, just raise your hand. I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to do anything to hurt you. Amen. Anyone else? Amen. Father, I just pray for each person to raise their hand, and maybe those who were just maybe felt intimidated, or maybe the devil tried to scare them or convince them that they don't need to. God, I just pray right now for an increase in peace. As John spoke, that he prayed that we would prosper and be in health as our soul prospered. Father, I pray that their peace increases as the Prince of Peace increases in their I pray, God, right now for a supernatural peace that surpasses all understanding, which will enrich in our hearts. That no matter what the season brings, no matter what tomorrow brings, no matter what life brings, they have peace because the King is in residence in their hearts. So, Father, I just thank you this morning. Bless your people today.
Oh.